Okay, so what I'm doing here, let's document, and I'm just going to change that range out of there, is I am trying to get some fiber mesh. I'm going to take it from ZBrush to XGen. So first thing I got to do is I need to take my model here, and I'm in ZBrush, and to, to generate uh, fiber mesh, you need to make masks, okay? And there's something acting kind of funky in my masks. Um, but that's okay. I can't quite figure out what it was, if it's like an R, uh, R8 thing or not. Anyway, do something like that. And we'll say this is good. And I can smooth that out. Um, and I can uh, go into the mask section if I want to and maybe even do some stuff like masking. I can... Uh, blur the mask a couple of times and then I can sharpen it, blur it again. Sometimes that helps with uh, making the line a little bit better. Okay, and we'll call that good. And I've already got some fiber mesh you can see around here. If I just go into the fiber mesh section with this area mask, when I hit um, preview, this is going to show us some fiber mesh that it's going to generate for us. And then we can go to modifiers and we can start to play with it and we can play with, say, the length. Here, I've got quite a, a large scene, so my, my, my uh, values that I'm using might be a little bit different than what you're going to use. And I can go ahead and play with some other settings in here and I can hit accept. And when I hit accept, if I go into the subtool section, and I hate that preference, just hold on a second, interface, palettes. Open one sub palette. I like having multiples open at the same time and dragging around in here. Don't like things flicking around on me. Anyway, there it is. Now I can style this. I can go in here and grab any of these funny room brushes here. And I guess this is acting a little bit funny because I'm, and there's my max size is acting funny. If I go up here and I double click on max size, then I can get this. I can change my max size down and I can start to style my hair. And if I had, you know, I can get a little bit of style going on here. I find it kind of easy to do. Maybe I should be using the, um, I just grab Groom Strong really quick, just Groom Brush. And, and then if I double click the dynamic, then I've got a good size. And yeah. Anyway, I can kind of come in here and style things a little bit kind of hard to see. It's a little bit dark. Maybe if I... <laughs> I'd have to change some colors around and stuff. But anyway, you get kind of the general idea. Okay. Big thing is, you can probably find tutorials all over the place on how to style it with fiber mesh. But, when I want to take this out and I want to move it to Maya, what I'll do is I'll go back in here to the fiber mesh section. Let's uh, close down the modifiers. There is an export curves option here. I'll export curves and it says, oh, this is going to result in a lot of curves. Maybe we want to uh, make that less. If I go up here to the preview settings. I can take my preview settings and drop them down by, say, half. And then when I hit export curves, we can export them out and there's no warning or anything like that crazy. And it gives you by default an OBJ setting. You want to change that to an ASCII file. And then you'll do like hair. And then you can export it out. Okay, so that's what you want to do. You want to bring that, that curve number down because otherwise it's just too many curves. And then we're going to zip into um, Maya. And I've already imported the curves in and I've gone into uh, my <coughs> hierarchy here. And there's my hair brows and then I've got hair top. And I selected all the curves and they said fiber mesh on them and I changed the names of them. Okay, um, what else do I have here that's interesting? Okay, so there's my hair. I've also got a brow scalp and I've got a hair scalp. I've just duplicated the mesh and I deleted all the faces I didn't want. Okay, and one of the problems is I've noticed if you don't do this, what you're going to see if you're using V-Ray, I don't know if you're what happens if you're using Arnold, the same thing happens, but if you're using V-Ray, this is going to convert your UVs into PTEX instead of like normal UVs, and then you end up with some issues. Okay, which I was like, uh, this is probably easier. So, 
I've got this into the hair scalp. Um, I'm going to take the hair scalp and I'm going to go into generate XGen generator. And do I need anything that, that now? No. I'm going to go to new description and you can type in a new description. You can call this like hair top. Hair top. And then if I go here to uh, collection name, I'd probably call this my John Oliver collection. Okay, John collection. Remember that the collection is kind of the groupings of all the hair you're going to have on your whole mesh or your whole scene. And then this is an individual one that's describing which hair system you're working on. So I'm working on the hair top. There's these brows. They're going to have their own description. Okay, and I'm going to change the splines using long hair. Okay, great. And then I'm going to do uh, placing and shaping guides. We want guides for this one. So we've done that. We've got it on the scalp. We're going to go over to the modifiers, no, the utilities. And utilities, we need some curves to guides here. Okay, I've just gone in here and you click on this and suddenly it says curves to guides. And I'm going to go zipping into, come on you bastard, oh it's down here, I freaking hate that feature. <laughs> Another feature, it used to just, whenever you hit the buttons they would open up for you, but now they lock down here for whatever reason. Okay, so I'm going to go to hair top, and I'll go in here to select hierarchy. That grabs all the hairs, and then I can hit add guides. Oh, do I have this music too loud? I hope not. Okay, so it's going in, doing its little thing, adds the guides, they're 100%. Okay, cool. And if I go over here and I hit the big eyeball, bloop, I can see what I'm doing. Something funny is usually mine turned to an orange color and I'm getting the weird thing again. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. I can uh, I can hide these hairs, little eyeball thing. That'll hide my guides. Go away, guides. Okay. And I can just look at my um, curves here, or my hair. And if I go in here, density, let's pull up the density. Let's see, what do we drop it up to 300? See what happens. It's thinking. This might be a bit much. La la la. Spinning wheel of death. Do not die on me now. Do not die. Okay. Do I sense anything? Okay, that's a lot of hair. Maybe too much hair. Why did I go up to 300? Um, 100. As soon as I do that, I have a, a setting on here. We'll see, update preview automatically, okay? It's funny, I was using 300, I had to do this over a couple of times. I was using 300 in it, it was fine. But now it's bombing on me. <clears throat> okay, great, we'll say at 50. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the width here. And you could crank up the width on these things if you want to. The, there's still, there's a lot of guides. I probably could have thinned that out even more if I really thought about it. Okay, but you can see how thick they are. Now I can bring down the width ramp. I think they were just way too thin to start off with. I'm going to bring this down. Remember that your hair, you don't want it to go all the way to thin at the very end because you get cut, your hair cut, right? And so we'll do something like this. Actually, you know what? As soon as this updates here, I'm going to take this back down again. Let's go to, say, 10 and see what happens. Yeah, that's much lighter and easier to work with. Okay, so again, you can see the width. Enlarging. You can go beyond the slider if you need to, but I think I'm, I always model big. Um, you can play with a bit of the taper. Okay, but it's still looking a little bit funny. And that's because we need to go in here to these modifiers. And let's go into the modifiers, and I'm going to put a little bit of noise on here. Boop, noise. Okay, my magnitude, because 
Because the scene is quite big, I can probably get away with a lot. Let's see if we go up to 100. What do we get? Anything interesting? That's better. No, that's too much. So then let's half it. Okay, let's... I can go probably even less than half this time around. 20. <laughs> How about 5? Okay, 5. I always like to go extreme, and then you can kind of... It's easy to kind of half it, half it, half it, and then you get back to what you are you want. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. And um, something else I might do, because the hair is all coming out at relatively the same length. Oh, and I just remembered there was another trick I figured out, too. I was horsing around, and before I even made the X-Gen hair, I went in and I took all the curves and I uh, rebuilt them. I went into curves and I rebuilt them with a, a lower setting on them. I think I probably used eight or something like that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, anyway, no, it's too late for that. Uh, so if I go in here and I hit cut, and you double click on it, nothing happens, you have to hit OK. And cut will give you some length changes here. So you can see the rand is in here. There's a little bit of scripting going on. And random it starts at 0 0.01 and or 0 0.00 and then it goes to uh, 0 0.2 and you can change this second value after the comma to whatever you want. Now it's hit 7. It's going to give you some longer crazier variation. I might just do something like uh, comma, I don't know what, 2, enter. <clears throat> okay and that should be enough just to make it regular. Okay, so we're good. And um, now, if I go back to previews, you might see things like this little bit of hair sticking out here, and I might see more of those. There's also a little bit of something. I have to move some of those guides around. I think I spent a lot more time playing with my guides. Um, but what I need to do now is if I go up here to the general attributes in the primitive section, there's a mask that you can put on. And again, this mask, if you've got some other kind of, um, whatchamacallit, if you have uh, some other kind of material on, like a V-Ray material or an Arnold material, this might not work correctly. So make sure before you do this, so what have I got here? I've got, let's just double check and make sure I'm not screwing myself up. Because this puzzled me for a while. And I started, I go here to the hair scalp and I go into the attribute editor for it. And you see right there, I got a V-Ray material. That's a bad idea. Don't do that idea. Here, I'm just going to isolate it for a second and I'm going to go in and I'm going to throw in a Lambert. Okay. So now I got a Lambert on here and let's bring everything back. And when I take that Lambert and I go over here and I go to create map, this is going to create a PTEX map. I'm going to change my resolution to say 25. Keep it on white, hit create, and even we're starting to see PTEX issues happening here on the V-Ray material on this face here. And that's not what I have to worry about right now though. Um, what I want to see, I might even just decide, you know what, I should just take this thing and hide it. Oh. Let's go ahead and grab this again, and I'll go back to my paint, and I can go to the paint tool. And the paint tool, when I have it on, double click. Okay, we've got these brushes here. I notice that this one here is a bit more solid and works a little bit better, so I can kind of paint out some of these areas. And the paint color is on black, so black is going to be um, one that's going to mask things out. Okay, so that's going to mask it out. Now, you see, as I paint, I'm not getting anything to go away, right? You also got to watch out too; you don't don't. Paint, it'll paint right through to the other side at times, which is kind of annoying. You don't see anything happen here. It isn't until you hit the uh, little save button right over here on the mask. Let's move this over a little bit. Mask, this little thing here. Whoop! Save to disk. It's thinking. And now it's... Oh, you bastard. <laughs> Actually, this is another thing I found. As I played with this, I was kind of like, you know, it works better if you just flood the whole thing um, with a, a black color and then paint the hair back 
because sometimes along the edges I found issues. Um, and you can see some of that black from up here went through. But if I go in here and, like I said, put this on and hit flood paint, and then I went over and I hit um, save, it's going to make all the hair disappear. Go ahead and put this on. And I can make my brush bigger by hitting B. And I can go in here to this color, paint it white. La 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 la. And then if I go back over here and I hit save, that area gets the hair back. Okay? A little bit on the flaky side, but it works. But this way I don't have to go right up to that edge. Because I notice there's something funky about the edge. Again, I'll hit save just so you can see I'm not crazy. Oh, you bastard, you came back. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go in and see what happens if I paint this black. I'm going to kind of move this over here. And save. Does that get rid of that thing again? Damn it. Okay, so I'm going to have to come back and paint it white. Okay, and I can spend some time doing this here. I'm going to try and do this quick and do a really sloppy, sloppy job because I can spend forever doing this and making it perfect. Actually, I almost want to just go ahead and flood paint it. I'm going to flood paint it white and just say I'm done. Okay, good. So you know what's going to happen. And... Um, so we got all these things here, and I'm happy, 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 and I'll hit save. Okay, now um, what I want to do is I want to figure out where I want to render this. So if I go in here to the preview section, um, currently my render is V-Ray. Okay, so I've got the V-Ray render on. You can switch that to Arnold if you want to. Okay, V-Ray, I zip down here and uh, if I go into this custom shader parameters, what I can do is I can, um, you know, let's get out of this brush. Uh, I can go into my hypershade, and in the hypershade, I can find the material I want to put on. And if I was using um, V ray, bloop, in the surface shaders, I can find the hair shader. Okay, and where are we? V-Ray Material Hair 3. Bloop! There it is. Okay, and I can just middle click it and pop it in. Dook. Okay, or um, I can do that with, say, the Arnold. Arnold's got its own little deal in here. So if I go into Arnold and I look in the shader section, and I've been playing with the L A L shaders, which are freaking amazing considering they're free updates. Um, and you can, if you switch over here, and I switch to, instead of V-Ray, I switch to Arnold. There is an AL shader in here. So if I go down here and I zip in, middle click, and pop this in. Bloop. Okay, bloop, AL hair. So there you have it. Actually. Maybe this is a little bit different. Anyway, I'm going to leave that alone for now. So you've seen them hooked up. And then I've got to go ahead and do some more work. But that's how you get the curves in and how you get the X-Gen on. Um, maybe I'll do another little video on some of the finer tunes that you can do in the shader.